Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless is Tuesday, April 30, 2024. Victoria and Cole look for Claire, Lauren and Michael talk about Sheila, and Ashley's alter ego comes up with a scheme. At Crimson Lights, Diane runs across Ashley's alter ego, Belle, and they argue over whether Ms. Martinez's coffee can be too weak. Diane queries her emotional state. Belle claims to be all right. Diane is happy to learn that. Belle scoffs, saying that butter wouldn't melt in your mouth if only she didn't know her so well. Diane is adamant that she isn't acting concerned. Belle assures her that she enjoys killing people nicely as well, Diane continues to express how concerned everyone is about her, even though she acknowledged that she fled the doctor's appointment without knowing what was wrong with her. Are you worried about what the physician could discover? Davidson Eileen, Walter Susan. Victoria tells Cole at the motel that she knows where Billy used to have his storage unit, and that's where she got the keys. She is curious as to if Jordan is holding Claire there since they have a number on them. Heinle Amelia, J. Eddie Peck. Michael informs Victor at the ranch that Jordan's body has not been found. He should give up hunting for that woman, Victor advises. She is no longer with them and cannot be of any use. I am instructing you to locate Claire. As they speak, she might be fighting for her life. Message received. Michael replies. He will assign the crew to locate Claire. Cole calls Victor and gives him an update on the keys. Victoria phones Billy in the background to get the address of his former storage unit. Cole says, We're headed there now, to Victor. Victor is going to send a backup. Michael believes they're assuming too much as he hangs up and tells him the news. He fears it's a ruse or a trap. After saying he'll find out, Victor leaves the room. Victor approaches Jordan's cage in the cellar. She informs him that the cuisine is even worse and the lodgings are foul. Where's my granddaughter? queries Victor. He hears Jordan say, you win. She proposes the same arrangement as before, a new life for her in exchange for disclosing Claire's whereabouts, with a preference for a chateau in France. Victor informs her that it's unnecessary. They are aware of Claire's location. We located the storage room's keys. A little careless on your part. I have no idea what you're talking about. Jordan sniffs. You know exactly what I'm talking about, says Victor in a deep voice. Jordan advises him to accept her offer if he hopes to see Claire alive in the future. Victor believes she ought to have accepted his offer sooner. Jordan contends, I'm still needed. Victor claims to be the only one who has her and to be aware of her whereabouts. I swear to you, there is no way out this time. Jordan shouts, you're not going to locate Claire you'll return and beg for my assistance. Victor, he exclaims as he leaves. Tracy visits Ashley's Parisian friend, a psychiatrist in the Abbott home. Alam remembers Ashley's outrage upon discovering there was a discrepancy between what she remembered and what actually happened in the cafe. Tracy says that after she arrived home, things became even more alarming. She describes to him how her demeanor fluctuates from being assertive, being naive, and enjoying herself to the fullest. She describes her blackouts as large periods of time disappearing. The family is very concerned. Tracy tells him her brother believes she might be going through a personality split. He has personally gone through a similar experience. The doctor is happy that Tracy got in touch. Tracy says to the man that she hopes he will speak with Ashley and encourage her to seek help. He tells her that although he can't treat her personally, he will try his most. Tracy is appreciative. All she wants is her sister to return. She clarifies that although she seemed okay with him being in town, her sister's emotions can change drastically. Ashley's bell questions Diana Crimson Lights as to why her grandchild, or the CEO of Jabot, is picking up brownies. Diane declines to take the bait. Ashley is concerned about Jack since he cares about her. Belle scowls and says, Please, Diane, reverse the truck. She introduces herself as a red-blooded woman who experienced heartbreak. 
She is self-sufficient. She intends to follow their lead and live her life unhindered. When Tracy calls, she rolls her eyes. Tracy alerts her of Alan's presence. Belle promises to arrive immediately. She informs Diane that she may now finally enjoy herself with someone in this place. If Diane's worry is genuine, she praises her for it as she heads out. Diane queries, what makes it not be? Because you are you, Belle responds. Thank you, Victoria, tells Cole she's afraid of what they might find at the storage unit. He agrees, but argues that they must act quickly on this. They stare into the darkness as they open the unit and call out for Claire. Claire, are you inside the room? It's Dad and Mom. Cole informs Victoria that they must enter. Have you got a flashlight? They hear a moan as Victoria lets it out. Mom, I'm in this direction. As she shines the light on her daughter, Victoria sobs. Victor meets up with Michael again in the living area of the ranch and informs him that he is positive Jordan hidden Claire in the storage container. The squad is en route to assist Cole and Victoria. All he can hope is that they arrive on time. Cole and Victoria assist Claire in rolling a dead body off of her and getting up in the storage container. Victoria and Cole give Claire a hug as she tears. You're in our hands. They assure her that she will be well and will be taken home. Victor tries to call Nikki a third time at the ranch. He laments to Michael that she hasn't returned his calls. It differs from her. He then gets a call from Victoria informing him that Claire has been located. She requires meals and isn't capable of responding to questions. Victor disconnects after telling her how delighted this makes him. When Belle from Ashley gets to the Abbott estate, she gives Alan a hug. Are you following me? Belle sniffs as Diane enters behind her. After making her introduction, Diane tells Alan that Belle is taking him to lunch. They go out. Tracy tells Diane that's Ashley's friend, the psychiatrist. Diane informs Tracy that at Crimson Lights, she had a fun encounter with one of Ashley's alter egos. Tracy scolds her for being so gullible. It almost seems like you're enjoying her in this state. Diane is furious. Do I really have to demonstrate my sincerity every time? In response, Tracy says, it seems you do. Victor enters the tack house after Victoria Cole and Claire have led Claire inside. Please come in. Claire runs to give him a hug. Victoria says she's been rattled up and hasn't said anything. Claire says she wants to get it out and is prepared to talk. As they all take a seat, Claire describes how she went to return Harrison's rabbit following the celebration. Jordan had to have trailed behind her. Jordan suddenly materialized and chloroformed her when she went upstairs to tell Harrison a tale and he went to the washroom. She was taken into the storage container the next thing she knew. She retaliated and came dangerously close to escape, but the woman gave way beneath her. The struggle must have given her a heart attack. Her lifeless weight had ensnared her. I genuinely believed I would pass away there as well. Alan and Belle, Ashley's, take a seat at society. When Abby sees them, she approaches and remarks on how cute she looks. After they've all introduced themselves, Abby lets them talk. As they chit-chat about Paris, he inquires about her well-being following their breakup. It's like I'm a new woman, explains Belle with a smile. Once more, Abby stops to deliver refreshments. I've never met a glass of bubbles I didn't like, Belle exclaims with joy. Abby turns to walk away again, seeming surprised. Ashley is dodging his inquiry, Alan tells her. She wonders if he'd like to delve into her private thoughts. Melissa Ordway, Eileen Davidson, and Christopher Cousins. Michael goes to the club with Lauren and finishes almost the entire glass of whiskey. Lauren's eyes enlarge. Michael reports that Claire was located. Michael must be relieved too, because Lauren is. Michael is hoping that they will hear from Los Angeles that Shayla has passed away as well. Victor may be hiding something from him, he fears. I don't think it's a minor detail this time. Jordan is the subject, concerning her passing. You think he's lying about that? Lauren asks in a shocked tone. He has a sense of, he has a lengthy history with Victor. 
Plo informs her family at the tack house that she has been contemplating about returning to them and her chamber, where she feels comfortable. She became upset with Jordan. She managed to extract the woman's phone from her pocket and attempt to contact Victoria because of her rage. Her mother claims that she was unable to understand her. Cole informs Claire that her mother requested they go to the motel and check it because she knew it was her. Claire discovers that Jordan also took Harrison. They tell her that the boy is secure. Claire queries how she was located. They inform her of the keys concealed within the doll. Claire queries Harrison's visibility. He's safe, but Victoria doesn't think Kyle and Summer will allow him leave their sight anytime soon. Claire is tormented by the ordeal. Where is Jordan, she wonders. I mean, the bitch is dead, says Victor. Belle, Ashley's sister, tells Alan at society that her family has determined there is a problem with her. Is he present only for business purposes? Although Alan acknowledges his worries, he would never mistreat a buddy. We have good friends, aren't we? Belle wonders. Alan was curious to see where she lives, but if she is against him being here, then she agrees, but she must reveal to him a small detail. It is greatly exaggerated what the rumors are about my mental breakdown. He seems to be the ideal answer for Ashley, in her opinion. It's time to feel a little joyous. Lauren warns Michael at the club that she'll her best stay away from her, or she'll regret it. She then shifts to Nikki, calling off their morning meeting. She was really worried. Where did she go, Michael wonders. Lauren reports that she returned home. Michael claims that she was absent, Victor has been attempting to contact her. After calling Jack to ask him to call Nikki, Lauren leaves a voicemail for her. Claire remarks in the tack house that she's relieved Jordan isn't alive. Is that accurate? Is this my last goodbye to her? Victor swears she won't ever again harm anyone. Jordan rants and paces the jail, saying, You will not prevail. You're not going to prevail. I'll be defeated by you. Victor Newman, I'll find a way out of this nightmare, and I'll make you pay for it. So, what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.